we are here to uh, once again we have we have so much penance to do. Like this McGregor Mayweather fight coming up, really, I can't whip myself enough. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, this time we're not paying penance for all the good fights we've experienced lately. We're paying penance in preparation for the meaningless fight we're about to see. Exactly. So. I like to think of it as building up an immunity. It's like yeah. hurricane powder. <laughs> like, it's... we're building up an immunity to trash. <laughs> Fabio Maldonado is the microdose of Iocane powder to Mayweather McGregor. <laughs> exactly. That sounds good. What up, what up, everybody? Welcome to Back to the Sound of Islands podcast. This is Pulver. I am here with Chris Madaff, or my co-host. What up, Brett? Doing great, man. We've been enjoying the last two days off. and uh... Yeah, kind of a week free of podcasts, week free of a lot of stuff. Like, not many people are putting out shows right now since it's the downtime in uh, MMA. I think pretty much the only thing happening this weekend is uh, Polaris 5 and a couple small shows on uh, YouTube. And uh full t- full combat and shit like that uh but yeah i mean there hasn't been a lot of shows this week right like have yeah, you seen yeah. anything no I, th- time, I, right? I i've seen just from some of them they have some shows like anakin floyd i didn't listen to because they just had different it's all con- connor different and style. floyd stuff yeah it's right? just still all very much conor mcgregor floyd mayweather kind of stuff because that fights in like what fucking eight days already which is sad it's upsetting. Yeah. yeah. Uh, man, it, it's crazy. So if you guys uh, don't know, normally we are a podcast that talks about MMA podcasts and which ones you should be checking out. However, this week, since it is not a uh, not really a week where there's any big shows happening and nothing that really struck my interest apart from that Polaris event where uh, – Jake Shields is grappling, uh, Brad Pickett is grappling, and uh, Gary Tonin is going to tear apart uh, Dylan Danis' Dylan Dennis's entire leg structure, uh, so I'm pretty hyped for that on Fight Pass, but apart from that, there's not much, so generally on these weeks, me and Chris like to go back and watch uh, watch generally bad movies uh but they happen to start mma fighters uh this one has a couple of them in there from what we saw in yeah, IMDb, seen, uh, right? george st pierre fabrizio verdum gina Kane, and kane velasquez and gina, gina and somebody else too uh yeah it's it's yeah, yeah it almost <laughs> it's almost feels like a kingdom the fucking tv show yeah, at a certain TV point show, yeah. like you, you expect chris lieben to show up in the gym in the background or whatever but uh Anyway, uh, no, so what we're going to do this week for the beginning segment, uh, which is going to be pretty short, I just want to mention a couple things about podcasts, and uh, actually to get in on that with us this week, we do have Girlfriend Karen here. What up, Girlfriend Karen? Hi! So we got Girlfriend Karen here because she's been listening to a bunch of podcasts as of late, uh, and uh, since we're going to be pretty off topic, it'll be some MMA, some stuff I, I just wanted to shout out. Uh, yep. Based on what we're doing, so Chris, why don't you kick us off with uh, what you wanted to shout out? Up, off so top. I'll shout out uh, for an MMA related one. I listened to Heavy Hands number one seventy two. Great episode. It's uh, really yeah. weird. And I love the episodes they do on off weeks when it's like they just do weird introspective pieces. Yeah, the one I liked is they talked about basically best coaches and best camps in mixed martial arts, and I like to hear. Inst- I, I enjoyed. Listening to the shout outs they had, like they mentioned in smaller camps, coaches like Matt Hume. Yep. In large and successful gyms like Jackson Wink or American Top Team. Those are kind of, I think they said those, I think they said overall the best gym in the world is ATT. And they kind of shouted out to Jackson Wink a couple times. Yeah, well, and they argued it was ATT because they have so, they have done so much for so many people's careers. Like, and the well roundedness of that gym is really, really underrated. Yeah, like, like if you name the champions off the top of my head, you get Tyron Woodley, you got Yoana, you have was Man- it King Moa champ at some point? In some organization, I think he was in Bellator. I could be wrong. Uh, I know he was see me super high level, regardless. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you got a ton of killers in that camp. Yeah, you got JJ, Amanda, uh, former champs like uh, Mike Brown. Robbie Lawler when he was there. Monsters like Dean Thomas. Uh, you, there's just a, an insane variety of uh, people at that gym. And the the variety of 
just insanely knowledgeable coaches there is uh, really underrated. Shouts out to Dan Lambert. I also who's a, who's a cool dude from. Oh yeah, Lambert. yeah, I remember him from Tough. Dude, is he? Yeah, well, he was like a pretty cool guy. Yeah, he's like the opposite of Glenn Robinson. The, the Glenn Robinson <laughs> one just seemed like a whiner. Glenn Robinson is the worst. There's a reason why Henry Hoof owns a gym now with all of the people from Glenn Robinson. Which gym. speaking of Henry Hoof, uh, they mentioned who are coaches that fighters will uh, like not abandon their training camp for, but they'll be seeing nomad across the country to right. go train. They said Freddie Roach for boxers or yep. even some MMA guys who just want boxing fundamentals. Henry Hoof was the big highlight because, for example, Luke Rockhold is exclusively training at Club Combat, uh, whatever his gym is called. I think it's called Club Combat in, um, right. in Florida. Which, uh, with Henry which, Hoof, and he's not even training AKA. He yeah, said that. Yeah, it's yeah and I don't even know how to feel about that. Like, it's a good move for Rockhold, but I don't know if that kind of gym is going to treat him the way... Like, I feel like... If he comes into that gym, he might get fucked up by some people. Well, because the way they train, they say with Anthony Johnson. That's and, what I'm talking about. You can't be yeah. sparring with Anthony and you Johnson. You know he's probably sparring with Volkan Uzdemir. So, That's my which point. Is a terrible you can't idea. be doing these types of things. And if, David Branch, anyway, is a grappler. He's a black belt in jiu-jitsu who trained with Matt Serra. So I mean, yeah. And by the way, uh, ATT motherfuckers. I'm pretty sure for David Branch, isn't he? No, he is ATT. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So uh, actually, wait. I'm yeah, no, he sure. is ATT, but I think in the past he trained with, um, fuck. I, I don't remember Some how. famous dude in New York. I, it wasn't uh, Marcelo Garcia. It was another person. I know yeah. he trains on Hento Gracie, but. Yeah, and he, when he's got a monster grappling game. His wrestling game is super underrated. People just don't like him because he's, he, like, he's super grapple heavy. He's the kind of guy Snoop Dogg is uh, not a big fan of. Yeah, no. Uh, they said they talked about big camps are the most efficient way to get things done because it's kind of more structurally organized. They said ATT is the best camp overall in the world, but they said right behind them are TriStar Kings and Jackson Wink. Absolutely agree they with all that. They said Combat Club, Henry Hoof, and Gilbert Burns, and most of Black Zillion Castos is another solid up-and-coming gym. Yeah, dude, one cool thing they talked about with Kings is they talked about how small it is. Like, yeah. if you go to an MMA class, that the one that's it's in, probably like... That's in, like, Los Angeles. It's LA, right? yeah. Because yeah. that's one Pat Wyman from Heavy Hands has trained at a bunch. Uh, cause he's trained, he's sparred with Fabricio and shit, and he says it's not fun. He says Fabricio does not fuck around, he just throws bombs the entire time, and Pat Wyman's not as big as Fabricio, uh, but, uh, yeah, evidently it's one of those gyms where there's, like, fucking maybe 20 people in the whole gym most times you go in there for a class, and, like, there'll be pros with, like, fucking really, like, not low-level people, but not mid-level people. Yeah. Like, fairly, like, not... Not their first class, but like some, they've had a handful of classes and sparred once or twice, and now they're with Fabrizio. Yeah, they've been around the block. They kind of know the routine. Yeah, it's crazy how small that gym is, which is kind of cool, and that kind of gives a perspective on how Pat Wyman ended up getting so much experience there, uh, which is why part of the reason why I like that show so much because him and Connor Rebush both have a ton of fucking Um, interesting experience. What's the name of Mark Henry's gym? They mentioned his gym is good for one of the best small gyms because he has Ricardo Almeida. Yeah. Mark Henry is, uh, it's in Jersey, I forget. I think Um, it's just called Ricardo Almeida Academy and like Mark Henry's just there. Yeah, it's something like that. Yeah, um, yeah cause who they have? They have Eddie Alvarez. They have Marlon Moraes. They have Frankie Edgar. Yeah, dude, they have like some Dagestani guys. Like, yeah, they have them. like uh, one of the Magomedovs or somebody. I'm I'm bad on names. With, they have a uh, real good small camp though, for sure. Yeah, Elwa, and they they are fucking workhorses. Like the way Mark Henry trains with like literally stopwatches and counters. Like he he'll count the number. Of, he'll count your output and make sure you're getting enough output to win rounds like it's a really interesting camp I'm a big fan of it but yeah that, um, that whole episode is so cool man yeah because the amount yeah. of research they did is really impressive yeah because they're saying who are the best unranked fighters who can give champions trouble in the Bantamweight they, make, they mentioned possibly Pedro Pedro Munoz not to like the champ but just to like that maybe top 10 guys uh, they said in lightweight Evan Dunham and Joe Duffy are pretty scrappy they said Joe Duffy's boxing could be some problems for some people yeah Evan Dunham uh, worries me as of late like, yeah because he wor- they said he's not athletic enough to kind of close the deal but he has really good clinch work and can kind of cause him. yeah and he's got a good ground game and stuff too but he's just like I, he yeah he, he takes a lot of time off and has gotten injured a handful of times feels like I could be wrong 
Yeah, so that's all I really had uh, for that. <clears throat> the only other MMA related thing I listened to was Unfiltered with David Branch because I kind of how'd that go? Because he seems like you really know much cool. about he, David Branch before this. I knew he was a champ at WSOF, but yeah. uh, I had no idea that he sounds like a New Yorker. I'm pretty almost 100 percent positive he was born in New York. Yeah, with his accent. Uh, he knows Matt Sarah. They're actually classmates together. I think in like the early 2000s, he was saying um, under Hendo Gracie. Um, and he's always talking about how he is not overlooking Rockhold, but he's confident because his last loss was five years ago. And guess who he lost to? Anthony Johnson. Yep. In a catch weight bout, like a one ninety five. Yeah, he's uh, he is great decisionator. Uh, the UFC hates those kinds of dudes, oh, yeah. but he is. Uh, well, he was in the UFC too, like years ago. Before, exactly, uh, and they got rid of him for having that exact problem. Like I think he he went he. I think they dumped him after one loss. I think so, yeah. I, if, I, if I remember right, I could be wrong, but I think he literally had one loss and they got rid of him because they were just, like, not about that life. Uh, Shouts out to fucking hashtag the egg. Um, but, yeah, it's... Uh, I like David Branch a lot. I think he's a cool guy. He seems, like, super nice and super personable. Like, a lot of the guys from WSOF who have not gotten a lot of shine, like... The Justin Gagey types, the fucking, yep. or like Marlon Will Brooks, or like yeah. Will Brooks over in uh, Bellator, yep. like I know Marlon Marais from WSOF. Yeah, Marlon Marais, like all those guys was all seemed super personable, but they were just getting paid good money in the, early in their career, and yeah. enough to where it was like, dude, I should just do this and wreck shop because I'm clear, and they're all Ali Abdelaziz guys, obviously, which makes it a lot easier. Uh, shouts out to fucking. The, the guy f- who fucked up uh, Habib ever getting a chance of fighting Ferguson again. Thank you. That's, I was trying to remember why, who, like, why people... Well, like he single-handedly left also, the fight not uh, Mago, Magomed Bibolatov, the guy who just... Did, no, 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 that's the wrong one. Fuck. Uh, somebody Magomedov. Uh, Rashid Magomedov. Rashid Magomedov, who just recently decided not to re-sign with DFC, is, shouts out, uh, their man, his manager is... Ali also. See, the, the, the problem and, with Ali is and, not his managing skills, the fact that he's personable to everyone, like, spars them and trains them, and then just makes it to... Not even that. How about the fact that he uh, had a fucking stake in WSLF WSF, yeah. while he was a manager, yeah. and all of his fucking fighters kept getting title shots and huge paychecks. Also, not to mention, he sends all of his fighters to fucking... Uh, Dagestan to hang out with Kadyrov, even though Ali Abdelaziz can't leave the country because of all of his fucking crime problems. <laughs> so it's uh it's pretty upsetting, but uh yeah, holy shit. Uh, overall, Ali is fucking terrible, and yeah, he's the reason why uh, Rashid Magomedov is probably gonna go to the rumor right now is PFL, uh, but which makes sense because Ali. But uh, yeah, evidently not coming back to the UFC. But pretty, uh, pretty crazy altogether. But uh, yeah, anything notable from that episode, or just basically Matt Sarah? It was like, just Matt Sarah in the in Jimmy, branch talking about stuff. Was but, Jimmy there? Yeah, he was there. Oh, also, quick shouts out to oh my god, my phone is dying. But Angie Overkill Hill is uh, currently streaming right now on Twitch. Uh, she is streaming Battlefield and Chill. So if you want to watch Angie Hill play Battlefield 1, you should absolutely subscribe to her YouTube channel, uh, or YouTube Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Angie Overkill, uh, because she is fucking a sweetheart. She's so nice. Um, I've never, ever had a bad interaction with her, or her fucking hilarious husband, who, uh... Shouts out to a couple weeks ago when we heard her choke out Brendan. Uh, that was right. Yeah, that was awkward. Not Brendan Shop. I kept saying Brendan Shop on the show. It's face. Brendan. Uh, Something. It, it's Brendan from the Bone Zone. God damn it, Brendan. It's Randy Licky and Brendan. Not small. Brendan. The other Brendan. You know who I'm talking about. The Bone Zone. Anyway, um, you, any other podcast you wanted to shout out, Chris? Oh yeah, Church of What's Happening now. Uh, hey. yeah, Action Bronson was on there. I Dude, like I have, so I have, still haven't heard it yet, but you and Karen, I won't, girlfriend Karen, both I won't told spoil, me I have yeah, to listen to well, this. 
Uh, just yeah. give out, just give your top three highlights if you're to if you're to pick them out. Girlfriend Karen, you can start with I, your top highlight yeah, while Chris pulls his three. Yeah, go for it. I uh, didn't realize Anderson Bronson had a ten year old kid. He, oh, he has a tw- no, he has 12. a twelve year old. Oh, I did not so know that. He has that. a twelve year old, and I think his youngest is like four. I and he's think... like a, and I think he said he wants to have a third kid. Yeah, I like didn't his new realize. Wife or something he, like that. Because uh, I think out. he's only thirty five. He's too. a rapper. He's like 34, so. 35. Yeah, but, you know, I never would have pictured him as a dad. If you've seen how fat he is and the kind of shorts he wears, of course he's a dad. <laughs> oh, see, I was just thinking he was trying to become Mario Bertelli. Oh, no. Guy Fieri, maybe. His sunglasses aren't on backwards. I think, okay, I think he's cooking. Action yeah. Bronson, I can't remember his real name, but he's Albanian, so it's like some Russian sounding yeah. like his birth name. Oh, absolutely. But he's a Jewish Albanian guy who loves to cook. Yeah, oh, yeah no. He, he, fits he, the, and he's from New York. He's from Queens, so it fits the bill. Yeah, he grew up in restaurants. Shouts out to... Uh, uh, fuck that's delicious on Vice, which yeah, Karen, girlfriend Karen and I have watched a fuckload of, because uh, fuck that's delicious is the best show on YouTube. Uh, check for a link in the description, because it's fucking awesome. Also, you know what? Since we're just doing this, shouts out to Eddie Wong. He has a great fucking Vice ch- uh, channel show also about eating food. So oh, on that Vice shit Land? is awesome. Yeah, on Vice Land, it's fucking great. Uh, Wong's World. Yeah, Wong's World. It's fucking real good. Um, I think my favorite part was him describing like step by step how to make a great chicken parmesan. That was pretty great. And I can't even get what is it? What what kind of cheese was it? Pollo cheese? What did he call it? It was some weird name that he had. I'm it not going to lie, I was really high when I was listening yeah. to it, so I can't remember. No. And, you, and either way, it's a special type of cheese that's really hard to find. That's I'm what he said. I'm so yeah. excited. I I need to listen to this I- immediately. I loved um, his episode on Joe Rogan, which we'll have a link in the description, as well as this one. But yeah, my I'll just say this. Man, my other two, action's great. My other, also, how wait, how high did Lee get? Oh, he so got so high. fucking ripped that he was just like just giggling, and it was offending Action Bronson. He's like, "Bro, what the fuck are you doing?" Right now? That's amazing. And then Joey's like, "Dog, just have another star. Have another star. <laughs> the fuck, cocksucker. Yeah, you fucking cocksucker. Yeah. Um, I, I'll, without spoiling too much, my other favorite part was uh, Action Bronson having a chimichurri, which is a Dominican style burger for the first time. He said they're amazing. <laughs> oh, really? And then I'll just say uh, there's one part where he describes to Joey uh, or no Joey described to him uh, these hookers that would just like erotically wash the balls of kids in middle school yep. and they would brag about it yep this checks out That's a, and that then, and like then a Action Joey Bronson story. talking about how he used to smoke with his boys in brothels in New York and get at $30 hollows <laughs> <laughs> yep, checks it out. Shouts out to weird eighties New York. It was a fucking different time. Uh, that's amazing. Oh, and Action loves truffles. Fucking goes crazy for this shit. Dude. Really? Loves uh, truffles. Wait, like the the hallucinogenic truffles or regular truffles? Because I know he's had both. There's no hallucinogenic. Yeah, there oh, is. You're, you're thinking yeah, of there magic is. mushrooms. No, there's people it's make magic mushrooms. They just call them. Tru- that's what I had in People Amsterdam. make. Oh. They just call them truffles. Like, oh, 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 you want to oh, truffles? No, so they'll mean... make truffles with magic mushrooms. No, 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 no. I thought you meant like truffles, the mushrooms. That's why I was getting super confused. No, like they'll like yeah. No, they'll they'll cook mushrooms like truffles. Except they figured out a way to do it that's legit. I believe. There's two different types of truffles. Yeah, there's the right, mushroom, not the chocolate. And there's right. the mushroom, and then there's the. I'm saying they're combining the two things. Oh, okay, yeah, See, I was, that was getting confusing confused. me too. Like, okay, what? sorry. <laughs> I, I, from what I understand, is in oh, LA yeah, they, they'll make a, they'll they make, make chocolate they, chocolate truffles with mushrooms. <laughs> that, but like, right? I got, I got you. Okay. But I think Bronson was saying he likes like both. Like he, he obviously I, he clearly loves hallucinations. I think it was a, I think it was a nod and a, and a legit reference. Uh, anyway, girlfriend Karen, why don't you get us into uh, whatever your podcast recommendation is this week? Um, so this isn't a new podcast. It's actually been around for about a year now. It's called My Favorite Murder. Um, it's got Karen Kilgarf on it and Georgina Hardstark. And I actually found this podcast by listening to Anna Ferris's Unqualified because they did a crossover episode. How is, so first off, how is Anna Ferris's podcast? Because I've never listened to it. I love, first off, I want to mention, I love her in, uh, 
Fuck, what's the name of that weed movie that she did? The Smiley Face. Smiley Face. It's so, so goddamn good. So she actually talks about Smiley Face. Like she'll reference it every once in a while. It's actually been to her, uh, quote her, her favorite fucking movie ever. Also, <laughs> apologize because it's not Anna Ferris, it's Anna Ferris. Is I, it? Everyone it gets is. that wrong. Okay, well. So if, for I, sure, just start calling yourself Anna Ferris if pe- that many people get it wrong. She'll be like this It's one and. Yeah. Uh, it's. Uh, it's Anna. So they, anyway, they did a It's con- like, have you heard of saunas? It's like that, but without the saw. <laughs> Sauna. <laughs> so they did a crossover episode um, between Anna Ferris's Unqualified and My Favorite Murder. And so I was, I, I really liked it. So I jumped off and I started listening to their podcast. And so far in the last like five days, I've been wa- listening to about 10 or 15 episodes. Oh, wow. Um, basically, anytime I'm out walking a dog, driving anywhere where my phone can be near my ear or in headphones, I'm listening to it. And it's a true crime podcast. Right. So you yeah. hear about all these fucked up fucking crazy ass things um the uh, very first murder i listened to was the btk killer right which is right, find him right. torture him kill him kill him oh yeah wow. from the, like i believe the 70s anyway it was a it's a really great podcast if you're not listening to it you definitely should be especially if you like horrible true crime things like i do yeah or if you've been listening to stuff like serial or that kind of thing right exactly um if it's kind of in that vein it, right? yeah well serial I, I believe is also a true crime uh, podcast isn't it i mean it it is was born like npr style but this is more like uh like documentary style, yeah this right? is more like this is how this went down and this is what happened and then they go off on these little tangents about you know different random fucking things they get out really distracted easily but um it's still a great podcast especially if you know you you can get through their small talk perfect well everybody go check that out uh and then the only podcast i wanted to actually i had i had a couple small small things i want to shout out this week um there is a little bit of podcast news and we'll get to that in a bit but uh first off beat down after the bell uh tj desantis on the show dog radio network has been doing some pretty cool uh tuesday night contender series recaps with mike fridley uh the guy that he does uh beat down with recently who's the uh big head dog at sure dog uh recently it's it's cool it's good it's like cool to have like a wednesday morning like hey or like a Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, hey, here's what we thought about the fucking Tuesday night contender series. Here's the cool fights. Here's who we thought they should have given contracts to. I really like it. I think it's I like awesome. I like when get like an alternative take on it. We're supposed to be yeah, and no one, share the same opinion. And not a lot of people are covering yeah. that show as much as they should be. Like, they're tweeting about it. Like, if you on Twitter during those fights, it's on fire. Oh, I bet. Every journalist is tweeting about it, but none of them are really covering it in their week to week podcast because just the same way they don't cover Bellator. They're like, yeah, it's the B League, blah, blah, blah. Well, we have time for the. Yeah, that's Mike, Michael Johnson. Well, we have time for what gets the hit. C League fighter. Yeah, exactly. Um, let's see, some other things to note this week. Uh, we talked about that awesome uh, Heavy Hands episode, number yeah. 172. Uh, Pauly Shore was on the <laughs> Joe Rogan experience. How oh, was that? by the way, I will go ahead and, uh, from here on. Actually, wait, let me get to the rest of the MMA stuff first. Uh, Jordan Breen was on. Uh, Jordan Breen did a show right after the NAC hearing, as uh, as well as uh, Luke Thomas did, both of which were hilarious. The, this is, of course, the Nevada State Athletic Commission hearing where they uh, said that it's super cool for you guys to wear eight ounce gloves. Because we don't really have any science. The reason why you should wear ten ounce gloves. So, yeah. so even though we we are very pit, quote unquote literally said pissed off that you would use our uh, use us to 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 fight over social media, we're still gonna grant it because you're bringing yeah. us all the money. Because Floyd Mayweather, so... And it's because, like, oh, and we want to see the odds makers get factor in 8-ounce gloves so Connor has a better shot now. It's like, oh, uh, guess how we make the city money. Also, guess how we help sell out the building, which makes us more money. Like, it's all fucking horrible. Uh, And then Breen and Luke Thomas did shows uh, just trashing it in the best way. Um, I have not yet heard the press row segment Jordan Breen did with Luke Thomas, uh, but I'm assuming it's fucking incredible um oh right Polly Shore on Joe Rogan uh fucking hilarious if you 
if you want to hear Pauly Shore talk honestly about the comedy store and hear a lot of cool comedy store stories about like his mom and uh and how and his dad and how the store came to be, it's fucking incredible. Uh, Miss Pat was on Joey Diaz's podcast, which is always great. Miss Pat was also on uh, Tom Segura's uh, Your Mom's House podcast. Who's Miss Pat again? I've heard of that. Miss Pat is the giant black lady who sell drugs, who's now a comedian. She has like three kids. I'd probably recognize her if I saw her. Oh, if you... No, if you heard her, you would recognize her. Her um, podcast is... Okay. Oh, boy. She is... The, she's the best. Miss Pat's the best. Yeah, the Gia, the Diaz podcast with Miss Pat. She, Diaz upsets Miss Pat, which is next to impossible to do. Miss Pat was, like, selling drugs with a kid on her hip at 16 and in the hood and, like fucking talking shit on dudes and she's still being like oh Joey that's too much yeah. <laughs> the entire time so it's fucking great um Joe Rogan holy shit you guys Joe Rogan had his thousands po- thousands podcast Joe Rogan yeah, has done nuts. 1000 actually he's technically done probably more like 1050 podcasts so there's a handful that aren't numbered but his official 1,000th podcast was with Tom Segura and Joey Diaz, and it was fucking awesome. They recorded it literally today when we're recording this, um, and it was it was great. They just literally drank whiskey and smoked joints and talked about crazy shit. Yeah, I got I got to listen to that episode. A lot of stories about how Joey Joey farting on planes and buses and just upsetting old people. Uh, he woke up a heroin addict in the middle of. Uh, literally passing out like the heroin act had been passed out on the tr- on the bus for like a good 20 minutes oh, great. and Joey farted and it was so horrible he woke up the heroin addict uh, he also yelled made a teacher at one point yell oh no he changed flavors in the middle of his farting episodes uh, just a lot of very upsetting stories Jesus. a like, lot of Tom Segura I mean it's Tom Segura so you gotta expect some of that if you've ever heard your mom's house him and his wife are fucking savages oh like but. the one with the, that couple where they come every time they hug and it showed the video that you, was really you, upsetting you've heard you've no, heard like, that was your really mom's bad. house right they showed the, yeah. there's this couple like they, they talk about getting orgasms by hugging other people and it shows him hug. Ed, I'm not gonna try to sound it out because you have to see the video. But basically, of course, no, his wife. No, please sound it out. No, no, no. But his wife was like, "What would you rather?" Have? <laughs> this fucked up. She's like, "What would you rather have? Anyone you hug, including your own parents or your family, you come every time you hug you. I'm sorry, or would you rather be mentally retarded?" And then of course, Tom's like, "No, I'd rather be retarded." He's like, "He's like, no disrespect to mentally challenged people. He's like, but coming on my parents wouldn't be fun." Also, if you're coming on your parents, you're fucking retarded. So <laughs> it's really. Uh, lose lose as far as I'm concerned yeah what, 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 did you have a hot take uh, what the fuck yeah your mom's yeah. your mom's house is a real weird podcast um shouts out to Christina Bajitsky and Tom Segura oh and it's all her too she's the one who comes oh, with this she always like, had I remember the before she stuff. talked about yeah. would you rather be mentally retarded or get molested by your grandfather yeah. like what she uh, yeah <laughs> like, Christina what Bajitsky is, is a fucking wild person in the best of ways uh but now that we've gotten through all of the MMA bullshit, uh, well, actually, one more MMA bullshit uh, before we get to our actual topic this week. Um, Bushido Talk. Chris, have you heard any news about Bushido Talk? No. Do you remember what Bushido Talk is? You mentioned it. <laughs> John Hackleman, Naya Rodriguez, and oh, Tommy Toll. So... Did they changed their artwork this week. Did she leave? So they changed their artwork, which has a picture of all three on, three of them on it, right? Is she wearing a mask? Guess who left? Well, she clearly didn't. She'd probably still be there. John Hackleman. Yeah, one of the other people probably left. That show is now officially uh, a little bit less about MMA, according to them. Oh, great. So that show will no longer be talked about on this show I don't I don't know if they had any beef although it was very fucking weird I know Tommy was being respectful to John the way he signed off on it uh, but like I, it was weird the way he talked about it in that like it sounds like some weird drama shit went down just because he didn't say like oh John's too busy he never said that shit he just kept saying like oh it sounds better with two people blah 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 and then it was like, why would you keep Naya if it sounds better with fucking two people, dog? Like, but... Uh, 
Yeah, I have to give some reasons why, but I don't know. It's just, it's uh, just, the reasons yeah. why are either John is too busy or Naya needs more attention. Uh, and I'm gonna go with the second. Um, I, I to be fair, I, I'm guessing it's probably John's too busy. Uh, he did say like, yo, it sounds better when we have two people, which I agree with. I think it's less talking with three people over Skype is kind of rough. Um, but still not my favorite. Uh, and uh, I'm officially probably gonna drop that show because I like Tommy, but not for his hot takes on MMA on his podcast. I usually just listen to the post mortem thingies. I love it for John Hackleman though. Like, yeah. That's the only part I liked about that show. So I'm probably going to drop that. Um, and then this is my other podcast recommendation for this week, you guys. This is my only recommendation. Actually, I have two. Uh, blood sport, number one. There was a blood sport, uh, not commentary, but kind of breakdown that how did this get made did. Uh, if you know anything about how did this get made, it's a podcast hosted by uh, Paul Shear, Jason Man. Zukas, Jundai, and Raphael, and I think it's just those three, right? Wait, what? I think it's just those three. I feel like I'm forgetting somebody, but I think it's just the three of them. No, it's just the three of them. It's Paul Shear, Jundai, and Raphael, and uh, Jason Manzukas. Paul Shear and uh, and uh, Jason Manzukas, you recognize from the league, of course. Uh, the, it's the bald dude and the dude with the beard. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then I, th- I was Jun hoping Dian- it wasn't the guy from the league who pretended to be a no, guy. not Steve Mazaga or not <laughs> Steve. Steve, <laughs> Steve Ren- Bring it on, Ren- come on. Steve Renegazzi. Um <laughs> Yeah, no, not him. Although I still like Ren- Steve Renegazzi. He's funny. Uh, he threw up recently on a Punch Drunk episode f- because they watched Arigas asshole bleached. Um, oh, cool. Yeah, no, that's the kind of content I want from that guy. Not political content. Anyway. Um, yeah, so June Diane Raphael, of course, is uh, married to Paul Shear, uh, who's known for, uh, like, NCS... What was that? In, uh, NCISSDSVU, I believe was the name of the show on Adult Swim. Uh, I mean, you talked about that. I think he showed me this. Yeah, it, shit. they had a Four Loco episode. He's, he's famous for being, like, a comedy friends with, like, a bunch of the, uh, the uh, UCSB guys, like, uh... Rob Corddry and those types of dudes. There anyway, uh, they have a podcast where they watch terrible old movies. They had a legendary episode with The Room. Uh, oh, they've of had course. A, Everyone's got to do The Room. Yeah, of, like all those old bad movies. They've done all of them. They were the ones, actually, that turned me on. Actually, no, they weren't. They turned G- you on. G- Whoa. Giovanni was the one. Giovanni Giorgio. Shouts out to Gio. Uh, super fan Geo of the Adam Carolla podcast was the one that turned me on to the uh, Vanilla Ice movie Cool as Ice but they did do the uh, they did do a great 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 recap of Cool as Ice which by the way is my favorite fucking movie of all time how dare all of you um, and is that the one where he has like that corny line to he's like yo kid something 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 and, like the movie just abruptly ends it's horrible oh it's I mean he's writing there's a lot of dance sequences there's a lot of him riding motorcycles there's a lot of uh there's like for him like, not riding a motorcycle is probably a stunt no there's a it's the best if you guys have not seen cool as ice it's the fucking best if um, you guys have not seen cool as ice don't see cool as ice she says that because she's seen it twice now but i've seen it like 10 times probably isn't that dude building houses for them. amish people now I hope so. No, I swear to God, he has some. Uh, yeah. really no, I hope shit. so, and I hope the whole time just go. Boop, boop, doo, boop, boop, well, because I think on that show he asked all Ashley, "Have you heard of my song?" And they're like, what? Uh, yeah, no, there's a, there's a fucking that was a sweet goddamn cool as ice reference I just made. Uh, anyway, they did, uh, they, they did a recap of the movie Bloodsport. One, probably my favorite, and you said my your boy, favorite. My boy Frank Dukes. Or yeah, the fuck is Frank, Frank Dukes. I think it's Duke or yeah, Dukes. Yeah, it's Dukes. Uh, fucking Frank Dukes. I'll talk about him in, in a bit uh, during the commentary that we're going to do. But, uh, yeah, so fucking they did a recap of that movie, and that's probably my Which, favorite John Claude Van Damme movie. by the way, Bloodsport is very similar to Kickboxer. Which is the sequel of the original film we're going to watch. Oh, of course. But yeah, I remember because I was just watching that with you earlier when I got here. I'm like, wait, this isn't Bloodsport. Because Kickboxer is goofy, but they take it themselves too serious. While Bloodsport is, is really way goofy, over the but top. they don't take themselves serious right. at all. It's like, what if you were going to make an MMA parody movie in the 80s, but 
you don't tell any of the actors it's parody, and you tell them to go way over the top. Yeah. Like, if you're like, yo, what if we did a Power Rangers MMA movie in the 80s? <laughs> like, it's kind of what it feels like. It's fucking insane. Um, so, it's fucking, it's real weird, uh, but I love that. And their commentary of it is hilarious. Jason Manzoukas kills it. More importantly than any of that, the podcast you all need to subscribe to is my new favorite fucking podcast called John Pod Van Dam. Holy shit, Chris. Was it just a podcast dedicated to his their favorite oh, Jean-Claude Van Damme Oh, movies? yeah. They, no, they're going through and watching okay. you know every Jean-Claude favorite, Van Damme my movie. My favorite one from I can remember is Definitely Sudden Death, or whatever the fuck it's called. With the, the Stanley Cup Finals, and there's a terrorist oh, who takes over the, the fucking that's Pittsburgh. Right. And he's just a goddamn... He's a fucking reserve. He's not even like a real fight. He's like a reserve firefighter, voluntary, and he knows fucking martial arts, and he's from Belgium. It's the greatest shit ever. Oh, you mean episode seven of their podcast, Sudden Death. Yeah, yeah, I gotta listen to that. That's... Um, oh, when he fights the giant... the ch- chick who's dressed like the penguin and throws her face in a deep fryer. It's the fucking... Yeah. Yeah. It's a... Gr- it's an awesome fucking podcast. The, the same dude that he had the same guest on yep go ahead do they cover Street Fighter yes oh is everybody plays Guile or whatever it is right S- Street Fighter is or whatever episode. characters are unrecognizable to be fair 15 right before Universal Soldier oh I remember oh, and, oh that yeah. was bad that was real bad Michael yeah. J. White to be fair was good oh there's one. actually two Universal Soldier episodes it's everybody four actually um, and he also has derailed wait, wait, in wait, hell wait. in the order what's the one play. dude What's the one that he was in where he's like in a Native American, I think, woods or reservation, and he's like a master with a bow and arrow? Could seen not he, tell he you. He has like a fucking mohawk. Um, do you know what I'm talking about? Have you seen I that? Do. He's like I'm protecting trying. someone. And the, the bad guy always goes like this. Like when he gets shot, he's always like, Black hey. Eagle. He, yeah, Black Eagle. He's, the bad guy's always like this. Hey! He just says hey when he's like getting shot. They have not. Like, what the fuck they is have that? Not done, so it's called Black Eagle? They have not done I Black so. Eagle yet. Oh my god. That movie is so. <laughs> but, I remember watching that, I think, when I was like 12. That movie's oh so fucking boy. bad. So, the, that <laughs> is a podcast I absolutely recommend checking out. Uh, let me see if I can pull the dude's name that uh, is on it. Um, to be honest, all his movies look kind of the same, so it's hard for me to... Right? Yeah, I'm going to look him up right so now. So I know Zach Clopton it, from Zach's Film Thoughts is the guy on uh, both the Bloodsport episode of this show and on the Kickboxer episode. He's great. I don't remember the main host. Oh, Marcus Jones is the main host name. Uh, and he's hilarious. This show is super underrated. Uh, it's one of the best commentary... Like, not commentary, I'm sorry. They do, like, recaps of uh, old old Jean-Claude Van Damme movies, but it's just great. He genuinely is such a fucking fan of Jean-Claude Van Damme. He's seen every kickboxer movie, not just one. He's seen two through five, or one through five. Wait, what's the one we're watching? Is that like five or six? We are I watching... two. So, he, there was kickboxer... Okay, this is the perfect segue into our next uh, segment. Uh, actually, you know what? We're going to wrap this show here. Uh, and up next, we're, we're, we're going to do this as a tiny bonus episode. And then we're going to do our commentary as a different episode here shortly. Because um, I want to split these apart so that you guys don't have to listen to 30 minutes of us talking about podcasts before um, before we get to that. But uh, we will discuss the history of the kickboxer series before we uh started off in the next uh in the next podcast so check that out we're literally hitting stop i'm hitting save and then we're going to uh start the new one so everybody sign off go from karen bye chris bye bye we'll be right back bitches check out uh check out our sweet sweet commentary of kickboxer revengeance with george st pierre coming up next because oh boy it's gonna be a dude.